you've got 5.5 though, you can do this. And what this allows you to do is the articles panel, okay, which just to show you where that was again, windows or window articles, allows you to drag and drop your material, okay, in the order you want to see it appearing in your EPUB. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to start with this graphic that I created to be my EPUB title. Okay, I've got it off the page here, so it won't appear on the DL, but I can use it in here, and I just simply drag it inside my Articles panel. And it gives it a default name of Article 1, and it appears as the very first thing. Okay, the little graphic there is indicating its uh, picture. And I'm going to grab this text box and drag that just underneath Article 1. Okay, so the first two things are going to be those two things. Then I'm going to just keep that process going and drag the things in the order that I want them. So for example, this block of text here, which is on my second page, okay, I'm going to have as the first bit of actual text that appears in terms of uh, the first thing after the title. Okay, so I'm going to click it, drag it. Notice when I'm doing that, it is moving it on my DL, but as soon as it gets inside the article panel, it snaps back into place. So don't worry about it being moved off the page. It doesn't do that. Okay, so I'm just going to keep dragging these things in the order that I want them. And I've got a picture here that I want to appear straight after that. I'm going to drag that in. I've even got a title down the bottom there, and I want that to appear immediately under the picture. And so I'll just keep going in the order that I'm doing this. Okay, so that one next. So I'm not going to drag that in yet. I'm going to now bring this one in. And then finally, oh, and the picture, of course. Just drag the picture in next. Okay, appearing underneath that. Then that one. And then there was a picture of um, the guitar player here, old Stevie Ray Vaughan. Now, Stevie Ray, um, just to explain how to get around the bug that's in uh, Adobe InDesign's EPUB exporting for pictures, if I drag that in there, it's going to be very difficult to tell that to appear at a sensible size. Okay, so what I've done, just off the page here, I've actually got... So, okay, so just clarifying, it doesn't actually print on the DL, but it's sitting off the page on the pasteboard. I've made a, uh, I've just copied that basically, made a much larger version of that. I'm going to drag that into my articles panel instead of the one that appears inside the DL. The reason I'm doing that is because, frankly, I want it to appear larger in my EPUB. And there's just a couple of bugs with the exporting options that prevent it from appearing large, so this is my way of fixing that. All right, so just clarifying. There's my articles. Oh, and that was that stupid little trivia question, which I'll just drag as my final thing. So this is now the order in which my EPUB will appear, the order that I've set up in my articles panel. Okay. Um, now, just before I move on, for the benefit of the folks who are using uh, version 5, if you have no other way of going about doing your export, you will need to know about placing your graphics in line. And what that means is this. At the moment, I've got my pictures and other graphics simply just placed on the page as you would normally do in InDesign. Okay, they're not sitting inside a text box, they're just sitting in a picture box. If you're using version 5 and you need to export this to work, um, you actually need to put your pictures, or it's preferable to put them in line with your text. Okay, so just clarifying. If you've got 5.5 and using the article panels, you do not need to do this next step. If you're using version 5 and there's nothing else you can do, just remember you're going to have to do this. Okay, so you'll need to grab your pictures. Okay, so I'll use this one at the bottom here as an example. And cut it, or copy it, but in this case I'll cut it just for the demo. Grab your text uh, tool make an insertion point, so I'm going to put it up here so you can clearly see what it's doing, just after my subheading, and then paste. Okay, and what that does is it actually places the picture, what's called in line with the text, so it's actually sitting inside the text box, working basically as a text object. And I can prove that by putting returns, and you'll see there it's actually pushing the picture down as if it was a text object. Okay, so as I said, if you're version, using version 5, you're going to have to do that to get your images to appear in the right order 
okay, when you export your EPUB. But if you're using version 5.5, simply just drag your pictures into the articles panel and everything will be sweet. So I'm just going to undo all that junk and go back to the way I had it. Right here. So that's pretty much ready now to export. One final thing I'll just explain that, again, I don't think is working perfectly in version 5.5, but I'll explain it anyway because there'll probably be a bug fix soon, is you can click on your images. Okay, I'll just click on this big one here of Stevie Ray Vaughan. And in the Object and Object Export Options menu, okay, there actually is a tag specific to EPUB and HTML, and this is actually where you can tell the images how you want them to appear when they're in an EPUB. And so, for example, here you can turn on what they call custom rasterization, which means the way it's going to convert it to appear on an EPUB. And I'm choosing that. The default is fixed, okay, which means it stays the size that you see it, but I'm going to tell it to be relative to page width. Now, I think what this is doing in InDesign is it's reading off the document size I set up, which means, I think that means it's going to make it relative to the A4 page that my document is. So that's a reason why I have to make a really big version of this, because I think when I use the small one, it's seeing that as a quite small graphic sitting on a big A4 page. I have a feeling the intention they meant there was relative to the EPUB or the e-reader page. Okay, but it doesn't quite work that way. But anyway, bear with me on this. This workaround that I've got here seems to work okay. Okay, so if you make a big version of it, tell it to be relative to page width. I'm actually using a resolution of 150 uh, pixels per inch because that's going to be more suitable for newer reading devices like iPad 3s and all the rest of it. Uh, so it's a good compromise between not being too huge in resolution and being high quality. Okay, the other thing on this is too the fact that I can put in some extra spacing. Okay, so this is spacing that is only going to be relevant to the e-reader. It's got nothing to do with the way this is appearing on the brochure. And it's using either a pixel measurement or an M measurement. Okay, so I've set mine to be two M's. And an M measurement is an older typographic measurement. Okay, which means it's a relative uh, measurement system. And what that means is if my e-reader is set to 12-point type, okay, two M's is roughly the equivalent of the space of two letter M's at 12-point. Okay, so if my e-reader was then told to display that text at 20-point, my 2M spacing would be two times 20-point M's. Okay, if that makes sense. All right, so it's just basically a way of having a relative measuring system. So I'm going to set that to be uh, the way I want that, okay, relative to page and 2Ms of spacing. And let's hit OK on that. And then I, I probably should save. Always a good idea to save when you've made all your changes. And I'm ready to export. So as I said, just as a final clarifying um, image here, that's my original DL. I have some graphics off the page that I'm using uh, for my EPUB, but they don't print with a DL. So in theory, you can use the one document for both a printed thing and an EPUB. And now I'm going to do my final EPUB export. Okay, so I do the same thing as I did before, file, export. And I'll just give it a slightly new name. And this time I'll be a little bit more careful about the settings in my EPUB export window. For example, um, first of all, in the ordering, which is the third thing down here, its default is to be based on page layout. I'm going to tell it that I want it to be same as articles panel. Okay, because I want that now to read off the order that I drag things into the articles. Um, the same information here on the book margin that will appear in the e-reader. Okay, again, it's got nothing to do with my DL brochure layout, but it's got a lot to do with how it will appear in a reader. Again, I've told that to have two M's of space. Um, I'm not using bullets or numbering, so it won't matter. Um, the image tab up there um, is where I can, once again, remind it um, whether I want to use the appearance of the graphics from the layout. I don't want it to do that. I want to use the settings I told it to use in the export options, so I'm not going to turn that on. Um, it's using JPEG conversion, uh, which is what I want it to do for my graphics. And the contents tab, you can just leave that alone on default. Um, we're not using tables of contents or anything like that in our DLs, so you don't need to turn that on. 
However, one important thing I will mention is this EPUB cover. Okay, it says at the moment to use no cover image. There is a choice there to rasterize the first page, which in our case would mean it would rasterize all of our first page of our DL, which wouldn't look so good. Or it gives us a choice to use a custom image. And just to clarify, I have actually made a separate image, and I'll just show it to you, which is that. Okay, and I made that based on the cover I used in my DL, but it's a different format. As you can see, it's using closer to a 4x3 format. Okay, and I did this very deliberately so that it would be more suitable for viewing as a cover page on an e-reader. Okay, so that's a separate image that's not appearing in my DL, but it's based on the graphics that I used. And I've done that for one very simple reason, and that's really just for this aspect of it, okay, to tell it to use a cover image, okay? Now, sadly, when we're checking this on the Adobe Digital Editions viewer, it doesn't actually show you that cover image, okay? However, if you do check this on an iPad or an iPhone or even on some of the Android devices and things where um, it does show you a cover image, it will use that as uh, almost like its icon, Okay, so it is very useful to do because it will appear as um, the file that people recognize in, in their collection of books. Okay, so as I said, don't be surprised if you don't see it in the computer viewer, but you will see it if you're viewing it on a phone or an e uh, iPad or something. All right, so I'm going to tell it to do that. I'm going to hit OK, and now we'll have a look at what it's done in the uh, viewer. Okay, and here it is. And partly it's basically looking okay. Now, you'll probably agree, there's some compromises here, we've got a whole lot of white space, but at least the first thing we're now seeing is my title. Okay, that was that title graphic I told it to use. And I'll just try and get this viewer to behave itself and scroll down one at a time. There's the first block of text. Now, yes, indeed, it has lost all my colouring and all the rest of it, but it has at least picked up the difference between my headings, my subheadings, and my body copy. It's converted it all to bare bones, basic HTML text. That's what we want it to do because I know and I'm confident that's now going to work on any device, okay, without any font conflicts or things like that. And I'll just scroll through now just to show you the difference between some of those picture formats. Okay, there, for example, is that smaller one that I didn't change. Okay, so it's still appearing quite small. But hopefully we'll see... And there's Stevie Ray appearing at a more sensible size. And if you remember, that's because I copied that and made it a lot larger off the side of the DL and dragged that one in instead. Okay. Now, just to clarify, this is still definitely scrolling like an EPUB should do. So if I squash the window, it is actually making things relatively larger or smaller. All right. But it's keeping that relative proportion. Okay. So that's the reason for doing that stuff. So... It is working. It's put the stuff in the correct order. Yeah, I'll agree. It looks god-awful compared to my DL brochure, but remember, that's the limitations of EPUBs. Now, yes, we can go in and edit this thing further. Uh, not easy to do in InDesign, uh, but I can go in and fiddle with the code and stuff if I want to, but that's not really something I'm expecting from this part of the task. Okay, I'm quite happy if you get to this point. Uh, for a, a basic EPUB. What I'd like you to try and do is to see if you can work out ways of bringing in graphics like I've done here, okay, that are ways of incorporating some of the graphic styling from your brochure that's still not going to interfere with the, the functional aspects of an ebook, like all the stuff I've been talking about with um, the text formats, etc., but keeps a little bit of the colour formatting going through, through your EPUB. Okay, so just be very clear on this. Your EPUB is not meant to be the same as your DL. You can't make a print document the same as an EPUB. It just doesn't work. They don't function that way. They're designed to be two completely separate things. They work in very different ways. Uh, however, you can keep some kind of graphic connection between the two. Okay, so give that a go. And remember, I'm using version 5.5 in design. All right, not version 5. Um, and if you've got access to version 5.5, you should be able to follow all of those same steps that I did there. Okay, hope that helps, and may the Force be with you. Bye now.